Hare Krishna. Welcome. <clears throat> Good to see you all. Uh, sorry about the technical hitches, as usual. Uh, it wasn't working. <laughs> so, so you can see me and you, can you can hear me? Yep, good. Who else is on? Can you let me know who else is on? I can see Angelina and Nat. Who else is on? Uh, there is Shruti with Vishnu John, Atulia, yep. Shona and Vakashri. Uh, Atulia and who? Shona and Vakashri. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Okay, so practically everyone's there. Thank you all for coming. Howdy, so tonight uh, we will begin the invocation mantra for the uh, uh, Ishopanisha. Last week uh, we concentrated on the introduction. Now, <clears throat> because the introduction has so much in it, um, that's why in the Ishopanishad course, the introduction is actually part of the course, because right? there's so much in the introduction, you know, Prabhupada uh, speaks about. Uh, does anyone remember anything from the introduction that we spoke last week? The four defects. Very good. The four defects of the conditioned soul. Huh? And what, what is the order of the four defects? Does anyone remember? Yeah. Imperfect senses. Imperfect senses. Make mistakes. We make mistakes. And cheating. And we cheat. Yeah. <laughs> because oh, yeah. we want to cover it up. Yeah. yeah. So these are the four defects of the conditioned soul. So very good. Everyone's uh, up to date, which is good. Uh, so tonight we'll begin the uh, invocation mantra, uh, which is the first verse of the Ishapanishad. Tonight we'll do the invocation. Next week we'll do verse one, which is the Ishavasha verse. These two verses are the KMVs, the key memory verses that you need to memorize for your exam. So please start memorizing the Sanskrit and the English. And then uh, after that, we'll probably start grouping the verses together. So we'll probably do more than one, one per class, uh, but I'll have to check. I'll let you know. Okay. So very nice to be with you all. <laughs> Very nice group. <clears throat> so I'll read the invocation. Om Puranam Ada Puranam Idam Puranat Puranam Udachyate Puranasha Puranam Madaya Puranam Eva Vashishyate. So we'll read the sans uh, sorry, the English. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. And because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as the, this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as perfect wholes. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself because he is the complete whole. Even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. So this is the invocation mantra. So we see in the invocation mantra, uh, what is the key word? Complete. Yeah. And in Sanskrit, we say? Purnam. Yeah, Purnam. So you know this word Purnam. Purna means complete, just like when it's a full moon in Sanskrit, we call it Purnima. Uh, we have Guru Purnima or Gora Purnima. <laughs> when the moon is full, we say complete. Uh, it is full, complete. So in this verse, obviously, uh, the key word is Purna because it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in four lines. Uh, so obviously it's a significant word. So as we read through the purport, I think most of you would have read the purport, the commentary. As you read through the purport, you'll see uh, the different things which are spoken of, which are complete. Uh, because there's more than one thing which is complete. 
so the first thing which is complete, what is the first thing which is mentioned within the commentary of the purple? Krishna. Yeah, Bhagavan, God himself. God is? Yeah, we know that. But he is complete. Yeah. Why is he complete? Uh, because by definition, he must be complete. Uh, everything is within him. Uh, it's an interesting story uh, of why we follow Akadashi Vrata. <clears throat> Twice a month, we fast from grains and beans. That's called Akadashi. Uh, so why do, we fa why do we fast from the grains and the beans? Uh, so the story is told in one of the Puranas that uh, there was a personality called the Papa Purush. The Papa Purush means the personification of sin. It means sin personified. All bad things are in this personality. And it breaks down the, the types of sin. And they make up the different parts of his body. I can't remember all the details, but they say like killing a cow is one part of his body. Killing a Brahmana is another part of his body. Stealing is another part of his Like his whole body is just made of sin. So he's called the Papa Purush. So one time, uh, a pastime evolved and the Lord uh, sent his chakra to kill him, uh, which the Lord sometimes does. When he's upset with someone, he sends chakra. Chakra is his disc, spinning disc. It's a fiery discus which spins at lightning speed and it is razor sharp. It's his supreme weapon. And when he uh, evokes it, and he sends it towards someone, it's irrepressible and you can't resist it. There's no one in even Lord Shiva, there's no one who can uh, who can handle that weapon. Right? It's the supreme weapon of the Lord. So he sent the Sudarshana. So he was chasing <clears throat> the Paparush all around. So finally, the Paparush came back to the Lord himself and he said, please give me shelter. And the Lord said, why should I give you shelter? Because all you do is contaminate everyone. You, know, you enter everyone with sinful desires and you contaminate everyone. And the Paparush said, uh, you have to let me exist. And the Lord said, why? And he said, because you are a porna. You are complete. So in you, there must be everything. So if sin is not somewhere in your creation, it's not complete. So you have to exist somewhere. And the Lord said, actually, that's a good point. So I'll, I will allow you to live. And then he said, where uh, can, I, can I be? Where can I reside? And the Lord thought about it. And he said, okay, on the Akadashi day, which is twice a month, uh, 11 days after the full moon, 11 days after the dark moon, he said, you can reside in grains and beans. So Paparush enters. That's why we don't eat grains and beans on a college year. That's why we follow it. Because otherwise, uh, sinful desires enter your consciousness. And I've actually noticed over the years, uh, I've noticed sometimes some devotees aren't strict about following a college year. I've noticed those devotees, they struggle. You know, they, uh, they struggle with material desires and so forth. It's very important to follow a Kodashi. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked his mother to follow a Kodashi. He said, please follow. Uh, yeah, this is several pastimes in Chaitanya Bhagavata and Chaitanya Charitamrita regarding uh, following a Kodashi. Well, the Lord instructed us to do it. Prabhupada also instructed us to do it. Sometimes the bodies argue it's not so important, but uh, from what I can see, it, it is important. It's very important. <clears throat> so the point is, is that Purna means complete. Everything is in Krishna. So the first uh, uh, personality who is complete or subject matter that is complete within, the, within this verse is Krishna himself. He is complete. Everything is in him. <clears throat> so he is whole. And... Because he is whole, he always feels self-satisfied. That's why Krishna is known as Atma Rama. 
Atmarama means self-satisfied, which means within himself, he feels complete. We should also feel like that, self-satisfied. Hands up if you feel complete or self-satisfied. Got one? Any of the onliners? I can't see you all, so, okay. You can, I think there, there might be an opportunity to put a virtual hand up or something. I think so, okay. No one else, I can't see anyone else, so. It's concerning. <laughs> it is actually concerning because we should all feel complete. We should all feel like that. Uh, so at least I've got one out of many. <laughs> Someone put up the emoji with the crying. <laughs> uh, very funny. So we should feel complete. Uh, otherwise, you'll feel like the crying emoji. <laughs> you'll feel incomplete. So Krishna is Atmaram. Atmaram means he feels complete. He feels self-satisfied. Uh, why? Because he is Krishna. He is the sum total of everything. He's God. God, by definition, must be complete. If God is not complete, then he's not God. Yeah. If, yeah. 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 Is what? Isn't that bad? So he's feel bad about it. Yeah. If he has the bad stuff in him all the time, should that be a little bit make him like put him off a little? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh he it's not actually in him. When we say in him, we mean within his creation. So, so he himself doesn't feel any of those negative emotions or he's complete. But because all this, everything we're looking at right now comes from him, within that which comes from him, then those negative things exist. Does that make sense? It's a good question. So uh, Krishna is known as Atmarama. Atmarama means he is complete. He feels complete. Because if he's not complete, he's not God, by definition. Uh, even though he's Atmarama, he's actually not Atmarama. Because, uh, you can see in the picture behind me, Krishna, who is Atmarama, is with Shumati Radharani and relies on her to feel complete. And without her, he does not feel complete. Does it make sense? No. Okay, good. <laughs> How can you be complete and not complete? As the super soul, or as maybe as Lord Narayan, he is complete. But as Krishna in his original form, he is not complete without Srimati Radharani and his devotees. Right? In other words, his uh, completeness comes from the love that he receives from Radha, from Srimati Radharani and his devotees. That's how he feels complete. Does it make sense? Yeah, it is, it's a little contradictory, but yeah, it is there. Actually, Jiva Goswami says, Radharani is so powerful, uh, she alone can satisfy Krishna. Krishna doesn't even need anyone else, right? She is so powerful, just her can satisfy Krishna. So then the question is, why do we exist? I actually asked Gopi Purana Dana Prabhu this one time. Yeah, yeah because I was at Govardhan and he was giving class and and I, I was having a realization while I was giving class. I was feeling, what's the need? What's what is the need of me? Does Krishna need me? You know, it's a very deep. Uh, it's a very deep point because if we don't feel needed, right? It it it, it makes us feel despondent. And I was I was feeling a bit like that in the in his class because he was explaining Krishna is complete and everything, and I thought, well then. Why do I exist? So I asked him. And he, he answered very beautifully. He said that although Krishna is complete, and although he is complete just with Shimati Radharani, and although he's complete with all of his pure devotees, still there is something within each individual soul that only they can offer to Krishna. So he needs all of us in the, in the sense that 
there is something that he can only feel from us in our bhakti or in our devotion to him. So he actually need, he needs all of us or, or, or he relishes the exchange of love or bhakti that he receives from all of us. So that makes us feel, you know, uh, satisfied and happy that Krishna does need us. Uh, however, I, I don't know if I've worked out what it is in me that Krishna needs or especially receives. Maybe one day if I ever go to the spiritual world, I'll to have some realization of that. But uh, Gopi Purana Dana Prabhu, he told us Krishna needs all of us. So the point is he is Atma Rama, which means he's complete. Huh? Now in this verse, there are three things which are spoken of, which are complete. What is the, what is the second thing? First thing is Krishna. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Th this material world, this material world is complete. How is it complete? It is complete in the sense that it is self-sustaining. Uh, so on. have you got a question? Your hands up. Yeah. Hi, Krishna. I yeah. have a question regarding the completeness. You know how it said that we come to the material world because we want to enjoy ourselves. So does that mean because we are part of Krishna, does that mean that in a way that's also Krishna's wish and to come to the material world? You enjoy himself? Uh, sorry, I don't understand. What's the question? So if we, uh, um, you know, it said that the soul comes to the material world because it wants to enjoy itself. But how can we want to enjoy ourselves apart from Krishna if we are part of Krishna? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's called Maya. That's called Maya. We came to this material world to be separate from Krishna. And then the question always is, why did we leave Krishna in the first place? Why did we leave the spiritual world in the first place? If we were feeling complete, Prabhupada said we have independence. So we misuse, sometimes we do naughty things. Hands up if you ever did a naughty thing. Okay, it looks like a hundred percent. So uh, we all did something naughty. So why did we, yeah, you don't, Put your virtual hand up. I got the point. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's a double. <laughs> Two hands. I didn't know anything. We know. We know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you can put your hands down now. So uh, we misused our independence. So we knew we shouldn't have done this, but we did. And now we're in Maya, which means we forget Krishna. So now we're in the material Well, we don't even remember Krishna. Now we're waking up by Prabhupada's uh, grace and mercy. And um, we're beginning to remember Krishna once again. But, you know, we came to this material world to forget Krishna. That's why we came. Does that answer your question? Or? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So the second uh, thing which is complete is this material world, the material creation. Why is it complete? Because it, it self runs, it self sustains. Uh, Krishna has created a universe that maintains itself. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary. Imagine if you set up a machine that just keeps running by itself. You know, there isn't a machine like that in the world. Perpetual motion, but even that will, will break down. You know, we can't, you know, something that'll, that'll go for it like. Uh, you know, if you look at this, at the sun, right, the sun is millions of years old, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe older. How do you set something up which just keeps burning and doesn't run out of energy, right, and perpetuates itself continuously? Like, you know, how, how can you set, so this material world is complete, right? It, it Once it's set up, it runs itself. Krishna has created machines that run themselves. You know, we don't understand anything about how this material world works. Just like, you know, an example of the completeness of this material world is our is the sense of sight. So I've got an eyeball. You know, you can take the eyeball out. You know, we've all I've never seen an eyeball out in life, but I've seen pictures and I've seen movies and things. 
yeah, the eyeballs come out. So I, I, I've, I've contemplated this sometimes. What makes it see? It's just a piece of jelly or, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say it's connected to your brain, but then how does your brain see? Yeah, that's the point. How do, what, what's, what's the, like, I'm seeing this now. There's an energy there, which is sight. So how does that, just that piece of, you know, flesh or whatever, whatever it is, how does that see? What is that vision? So Krishna sets all these things up and he makes it all work and he infuses it with energy and it just keeps perpetuating and people keep, you know, having children and then those children have children, those children have children. How does that even happen? All those things, you know, it's, 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 there's mystical power within it. Krishna is known as Yogeshwara. Uh, Yogeshwara means master of mystic power. Because you know, how, otherwise, how does it work? You know, so this world is complete. It is Purna. Right? It's that, you know, Krishna sets it up and it just works. It just operates itself. Yeah, you know, he can walk away and let the machine go. We can't walk away and let machines go. I mean, we can for a little bit. Yeah, you, know, you can put one of those, um, you know, vacuum cleaners that clean the room by themselves, you know, and they walk out and then they just keep bumping into things and going around the room. You come back four hours later and you expect that it's got everywhere, you know, but that, that even that won't keep going, you know, so there's nothing that just, just works itself all the time. But Krishna makes a complete world that just continues to work. Uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada's guru, he said that, uh, there is nothing lacking in this material world except Krishna consciousness, right? Which is an amazing statement, which means this material world is complete. It is, uh, in some ways, as good as the spiritual world, uh, if we are Krishna conscious or if we use everything in Krishna's service. And we feel like that, like we can feel in this material world, you can feel happy in devotional service you can you know if if everyone just simplifies everything on the planet and starts serving krishna the world's actually a very nice place <laughs> you know we can live we've got nice beaches and we've got nice forests and you know we've got a nice meditation garden and you know we've got nice food to eat you know the whole thing can be actually very nice but people misuse krishna's energy you know, actually, you know, Bhakti Santa Saraswati Thakur says everything is here except Krishna consciousness. If you add Krishna consciousness, it's complete. Without Krishna consciousness, it becomes a disaster zone. Uh, just like, you know, we saw a couple of days ago. Did you see the fires in Hawaii? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've seen fires around the world, but I've never seen anything like this. This is another level of destruction. You know, what this wind and fire did was, and that, that can only happen when we forget Krishna. Because when you remember Krishna, such things would not, would not happen. Right? If we were all practicing in a proper way, these things wouldn't happen. In the spiritual world, these things do not take place. Why? Because everyone remembers Krishna. So Krishna allows everything to be auspicious. So the material world, it's inauspicious because we forget Krishna. So Krishna is complete. The material world is complete. And what is the third thing which is spoken of in this verse, which is complete or not? We, um, living beings can be complete. Very good. Yeah. The living beings can be complete when? When realized with realization dovetailing to the complete whole being Sri Krishna. Yeah, very good. Yeah. When we are performing bhakti yoga or service to Krishna, then we are complete. Right? The jiva is complete. That's why we strive to be complete. Why do we strive to feel complete or to be complete? Because that is our natural position. 
Jivaras Rupa Hoy, Krishnara Nichadas. Krishnara Tatasta Shakti Beda Beda Prakash. Right, Chaitanya Charitamrita said. Jivaras Swarupa Hoy. What, what is Swarup? Yeah, Swa means own, Rupa means form. Your own form. Jiva. Jiva means the, the soul. The soul, the soul's own form or spiritual identity is Krishnara Nitya Das. Right? Krishna Das. Nitya Das means eternal servant of Krishna. Right? When you are eternally serving Krishna and identifying as that, then you will feel complete. You'll be happy. You'll be satisfied. Krishnara Tatashta Shakti. Beda Beda Prakash. Tatashta Shakti means marginal. Marginal means sometimes we're serving Krishna and sometimes we forget to serve Krishna. Right? That's why we call it Tatashta, because sometimes we serve him, sometimes we forget to serve him. Right? <coughs> but you have to serve Krishna. Right? Someone says, well, I don't have to. It's true, you don't have to, but you have to. Right? Even though you say, I don't have to, but you have to. Right? Why do you have to? Because that's who you are. You're Krishna's eternal servant. Krishna already designed it like that, that you're going to serve him eternally. And so later in the Ishapanishad, uh, it says that Krishna just wants us to cooperate. That's all he wants. Just cooperate. Because he can't help what he is. Right? He's God. He can't help that. He can't change it. And he can't help that we're his servants. He can't help that. That's just what we are. We, we were created to be his servant. Uh, so when we do that, when we cooperate with Krishna, we will also feel complete. Right? And when we don't uh, serve Krishna uh, voluntarily, we don't feel complete. We feel empty or we feel dissatisfied. So that's why we call it tatashta. Uh, tatashta means marginal. We can choose to serve Krishna or we can choose to forget Krishna. Uh, Nichabada means we turn our back. Uh, on Krishna. Bahia Muk. Bahia Muk means we turn around. Sometimes it's described that the Western people, we are a little bit away from Krishna, a little bit distant from Krishna. But when we turn to look at Krishna, uh, then, you know, it'll take us a little bit of time to get to him. And then other times it's described that the Indian people, the people born in Bharat Bash, which is a superior birth, you know, because if you just go and live with them for a few days, like I just have, they're superior to us. You know, just their consciousness is superior in different ways. Uh, in other ways, maybe not, but, you know, definitely they're superior in certain ways. They're said to be very close to Krishna, but they're Bahiyamuk, which means they have their back towards him. And if you can just turn them around, it's like they're already there. Very easy for them to become devotees. That's why. We see so many become devotees because it's very easy for them. So we are tatashta. Tatashta means we are marginal. We can be Krishna's servant or we can forget Krishna. Uh, so when we remember Krishna and we engage in his service, we are complete. Uh, that is poina. So that's what this verse is speaking about, right? These three types of poina, right? Poina, Krishna is poina. Second, the material creation is Poina, and third, we are Poina, we are complete, when we engage in Krishna's service. Does anyone have any questions up until here, at this point? Okay. So, uh, if we go into the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada says in the first paragraph, that when one realizes the Supreme Person, he realizes these aspects of the Absolute Truth in their complete vigraha, means, in, sorry, in their completeness. Vigraha means form. Thus, the complete whole is not formless. If he were formless, or if he were less than his creation in any way, he would not be complete. The complete whole must contain everything both within and beyond our experience, otherwise he cannot be complete. Mm. So, 
there are three phases of the absolute truth or three facets of the absolute truth. Bhagavatam says, uh, Brahmeti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavaniti, Shabjate. Uh, the absolute truth is divided into three phases. First is Brahman. Uh, so we are personalists. We believe uh, in the Vaishnav tradition, the personalistic tradition, uh, that God has a form. And that form is the source of light or energy. And in the impersonal tradition, they believe that the energy or the light is the source of the form of God. So it's two different ways of looking at the absolute truth, right? Uh, in our tradition, you can see like in the picture behind me, uh, Krishna, he has the halo. You see the halo around his head? Right. So that halo is the Brahma Jyoti, the spiritual light which emanates from him. So in other words, Krishna, the form, is the source of the light, not the other way around. Not that the light became the the form manifested from the light. My bodies will argue the other way. They will say, actually, it's the other way, that the light gives birth to the form. We say, no, that's not, that's not true. That's not complete. Uh, Krishna uses in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he uses the word stanur. Does anyone know this word? Stana or stanur? Stan? Stan? Stanur? <laughs> stanur, stana, uh, stan. It means, uh, like, it means like immovable. Or fixed, stan, uh, stan adatri. We have one friend, one devotee, stan adatri. Uh, fixed, not moving, changeless, like that, does not change, without change. So Krishna, when he speaks about the soul in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, he says the soul does not change. There is a philosophy that the, the jiva or the soul comes from the Brahma Jyoti. We're like a fragment of the, the Brahma Jyoti. We broke off and we came down here and we're all like little fragments of the Brahma Jyoti. And then one day we'll realize we're part of that light and then we'll merge back into that light. Right? That's people uh, teach like that. But then we argue against that. We say, but Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Stanur. So if, if it's light, if it's one homogenous energy, how did it fragment in the first place? Then it wouldn't be stunned or it wouldn't be changed less. It's already changed. So by definition, we, we say that's a false argument. So some people, they believe that's the goal to merge into the light. The light is the, uh, the source of the form. But even that is faulty because if Krishna's form came from the light, then it changed, the light changed into form. Whereas we say the other way, Krishna's form is eternal and the light emanates from the form. It's not that Krishna changes into the light, right? It just emanates from him. Does it make sense? Yeah, so by logic, we can defeat my bad philosophy. Of course, they will not uh, accept it. Uh, and Prabhupada gives the example of the two men on the bridge arguing, what is the best way? <laughs> Yeah. What is the best way to uh, cut the paper? Scissors or knife? And the argument became heated and one man threw the other man off the bridge into the water. He was drowning. He said, save me. And he said, I will save you if you say that the best way to cut the paper is with a knife. And he said, no, scissors. And he said, no, you say knife. And he said, no, scissors. And then he started drowning. And as he was going down, he went, Yeah, you know, and uh, a lot of us are like that. A lot of us are like that. Uh, I actually met a friend, Atoria and I were at Warm Ponds today, and we met uh, a friend, someone who comes here, uh, someone that we cultivate, that we, that we all know. And uh, she was in a car accident uh, about a week ago, and she said it was my fault, and she said it was very difficult for me to admit it was my fault. Uh, 
Uh, and this is something that the conditioned soul struggles with. We find it hard to say sorry or to admit when we do something wrong or when it's our fault. And we, we have a we have problem with that. That's ego. That's a hunger, a false ego. So sometimes we go like this. Even when it's our fault, we keep saying, no, 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 no. Uh, so uh, the Mayavad is even when we say to them uh, that uh, actually Krishna's form is the source of the light, they'll say, no, the light is the source of the form. We say, actually, spirit cannot change. Krishna explains the Bhagavad Gita, Stanura, it is changeless. Give the whole logic behind it. And still they'll say, anyway, everything is one. And they'll just go, do, 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 do. Uh, so that is the nature of the conditioned soul. Uh, my body. Prabhupada said, my body philosophy is the last snare of Maya. Right? It is Maya's last way to get us. Even when you give up all material desires and you're ready to become liberated from this world, but still you say, Mm. Uh, I do not want to serve Krishna. Uh, even though you're liberated, but you say, I don't want to serve Krishna. I want to become Krishna. I want to become God. I want to merge into the Brahma Jyoti. If I merge into the Brahma Jyoti, then I am God. I am supreme. I am universal light. Uh, so that's why my Bhad philosophy is dangerous. Uh, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually forbade us to hear from my Abhadis. Until we're very advanced. You know, when we're advanced, we just think they're mad. You know, but in the beginning, we might actually begin to believe these things. Oh, actually, I can become God. So you have to be a little bit careful in the beginning. So uh, the supreme absolute truth, Krishna, he, he Brahmati, Paramatmati, Bhagavan, Shabjate means Brahman. The light, the energy which comes from him, the Brahma Jyoti, his halo, that is part of him. Paramatma, which means the super soul, when he expands himself into every atom of creation, into the hearts of every one of us, that is another part of him. And then the final part of him is Bhagavan, uh, which is his personality. Uh, so that is the absolute truth, those three factors together. And that, that's what makes Krishna Purna. Because he's everything. Right? He says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am everywhere, uh, but uh, everything is in me, but I am not in everything. Right? So he is everywhere, but simultaneously he is localized. He's in his own form. Does it make sense? He's everywhere because through Paramatma, he's in every atom of the creation. But he's not everywhere because he's in his own form in Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual world. Uh, so that is Krishna's completeness uh, like that. Any points? Oh, okay. Uh, so then in the second paragraph, uh, it is mentioned everything necessary for the maintenance and subsistence of this universe. Sorry. The 24 elements of which this material nature is a temporary manifestation are arranged to produce everything necessary for the maintenance and subsistence of this universe. No other unit in the universe need make an extraneous effort to maintain the universe. So this universe is complete. It has 24 elements. What are the 24 elements of this universe? Yeah. Yep. Earth, water, fire, air, and ether. These are called the Mahabhutas, or the five great elements. Then on top of that, you have the five working senses, right? which work, our legs, our hands, uh, and uh, what are the others? <laughs> the anus, the genitals, and yeah, I think the... Uh, the speech of that. So these are the five uh, working elements. Then we have the five knowledge acquiring elements, right? Sight, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling, right? So these are the five. So then we have the Mahabhutas, the five 
knowledge acquiring, the five like that. And then we have the five sense objects. Uh, so we have things which can be seen, uh, things which can be heard, things which can be touched, these five sense objects. Then we have mind, intelligence, and ego, which makes 23. And then sometimes uh, there's three more which are mentioned. There's Paramatma, there's the soul, and there's consciousness, Chitta. So sometimes it says 26. So 22, 24, 26. Uh, sometimes it's given as like a separate category. So it says like consciousness is a symptom of the soul. Uh, so it's kind of like counted like as two. It's one, but it's two. I don't say. Your soul is the Atma that's around the consciousness, and the consciousness is one thing that's occurring in the Atma. Or the other way, uh, the Atma is the source of the consciousness. Like your Atma is in your heart, your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Is it's that a, true? Yeah, it's here. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can just, but obviously, it's in your body, though. Yeah, it's got a place. And it's also, yeah, the consciousness is the symptom of the soul. Consciousness is the No, the mind is part of, uh, it's like a separate thing, but the consciousness which comes through the whole body. So like, you know, you're, you can feel all through your body, that's consciousness. The mind's more in, in this area, like that. And then the soul's in the heart. So these are like the 24 elements, or we could even say 26, sometimes it says 26. So, as it says here, Prabhupada explains, everything is there, everything you need. Right? We just make it complicated somehow. Yeah. Actually, everything's there. We don't have to make it. Life, life does not have to be complicated. Krishna gives you everything you need, and, and it's there. Uh, Hri Dhananda Maharaj, one of our gurus, he gives a very nice example that, how do we know God exists? Because some people say they don't believe in God, but we can prove God exists scientifically. Uh, and he gives a very nice example. Uh, do we need oxygen? Yeah, we do. Does it exist? Yep. Do we need light? Yes. Does it exist? Do we need water? Yes. Does it exist? The list goes on and on and on and on. Do we need God? Someone says, oh, I don't need him. No, actually, you do. <laughs> you actually do need him. Uh, you know, one old man I met one time when I was selling books in Adelaide a long, long time ago. You know, he told me he was in the war and he said, when all bombs started dropping around everyone, he said, all the soldiers prayed. He said, there was no one not praying to God when bombs start dropping. So this proves, you know, we need uh, security, safety and shelter when we're in a very dangerous situation, we pray to something higher that proves that something higher must exist. Right? So that's scientific. But even still, people will they'll say, you know, no, he doesn't exist. Right? Even though he does exist, but they'll say, no, he doesn't exist. So you know, that's everyone's right. But Prabhupada says everything we need in the material world is there. Right? We just have to make it simple and just serve Krishna. That's the basic principle. So then in the third paragraph, uh, Srila Prabhupada says, all facilities are given to the small complete units, namely the living beings, to enable them to realize the complete whole. So when you want to realize Krishna, what does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita? I direct the wanderings of all the living entities. When you want to realize Krishna, Krishna arranges for you to come in contact with the devotees. When you, if you want to realize Krishna, Krishna will bring you to the devotee. You know, that's what happened to me. That's what happened to all of us. You know, we wanted something more and Krishna directed our wandering. And then suddenly, you know, I was in Adelaide many years ago and I was in Rundle Street Mall. I walked into the mall. I was distributing books. I walked into the mall. I put down my box of Bhagavad Gita's. I picked up a Bhagavad Gita, I turned around, someone walked past me, I said, excuse me, are you from Adelaide or from out of town? He said, I'm from Adelaide. He stopped, I said, uh, I, I want to show you this book. I put it in his hand, he looked at it, 
and he, he looked at me and he said, the Bhagavad Gita, he said, I just ordered that today online. <laughs> you know, he said, I just ordered that today to be sent and then I meet you. If I had been one minute earlier or one minute later, you know, my whole day had have gone differently. And if I had arrived there at a different moment, one minute later or one minute earlier and put my my books down, I would have missed would have missed him. But Krishna directs the wanderings of the living entities. When they're ready to meet him, then he directs. So it says here, Prabhupada's pointing out that everything is there if we want it. And we will feel complete when we completely surrender unto Krishna. In the fourth paragraph, Prabhupada says, uh, because we do not know that there is a complete arrangement in nature for our maintenance, we make efforts to utilize the resources of nature to create a so-called complete life of sense enjoyment. So we were explaining this in one of the classes yesterday we were speaking. Every year, uh, Apple, the company who make iPhones, iPads, iWatches, everything, uh, they they have a quota to sell minimum of 50 million iPhones every year. Minimum. Maybe it's more now. So do we need that many iPhones? No. Do we need every year to have 50 million more? Yeah. Like, what's wrong with the one? Like, I've got one that I've had. Oh, I'm using it here. I've got one. <laughs> I'm using it now. But it's four years old or whatever it is. It's working fine. Yeah, iPhone 8. This way you don't update it. What's that? This way you don't update it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So why do we need to update it every single year? Why do they need to uh, convince all of us that we need these? Why, if we feel complete, we don't need to have the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Everything is complete. Everything is already there. It has an extra camera. It has an extra camera. Next year it's going to have four. Yeah, next year it's going to have four. Yeah, and then by the end of this decade, maybe they'll have holograms built in as well. You know, so this is uh, unnecessary things, right? Because we're convinced that if we have these things, we will feel complete. We only need these things when we don't feel complete. Yeah, if we feel complete, we don't need all these extra things to make us feel complete in this material world. Right? So that's the nature of the material energy. Right? It tries to convince us that we need more and more and more. Right? So Prabhupada's explained that actually everything is already there for us to feel complete in this world. And the things we feel the most complete with are, are natural things. You know, fresh air, pure water, right? Pure earth, you know, pure soil. All these things, they make us feel complete naturally. The Prabhupada says in the next paragraph, he says, the completeness of human life can be realized only when one engages in the service of the complete whole. So as devotees, as jivas, as souls, we can only feel complete when we engage in the service of the complete whole, Sri Krishna. Right? That's the only way we can feel complete. If we don't engage in Krishna's service, we can't feel complete. No? But if we engage in Krishna's service, then we will feel complete. No? So these three things, that's what this verse is about, porna. Because we keep reading it like seven times in four lines, the word porna is uh, used. Uh, so porna, three things in this verse are spoken about. The first thing which is complete is Krishna himself. The second thing is material world. this material creation. Right? And the third thing is very good. Yeah. When we're engaged in Krishna's service, the jiva will feel complete. Uh, so any final questions or points anyone would like to add? Or? It's me, Casey. Yep. I like the line there's something in there uh, it really this kind of really stands out to me that the human form you know even the the human form is the complete manifestation of the consciousness of the living being I like that that's you know like even like 
you know, the completeness of our consciousness, you know, we end up with a manifested form suitable for that complete manifestation of the consciousness that we're in at the time. Mm. Yeah. Good. Yeah, it's a nice point. And it was interesting. Only in the last two or three days, I saw where Prabhupada said that one, one person asked him, when we go back to the spiritual world, will we have a human-like form? And Prabhupada answered, yes. Very interesting. And then uh, it was a conversation, Harry Sori Prabhu, Madhudwiza Prabhu, Prabhupada, maybe a few others. And Harry Sori Prabhu clarified, he said, but Prabhupada, couldn't we be a peacock or something like that? And Prabhupada said, no. He said, generally, the devotees will be human, human forms. Because he said, that is the complete manifestation of consciousness. He said, even in the spiritual world, those who have those lesser forms, their consciousness is not being fully manifested as much because they can't reciprocate with, with Krishna as much. The Prabhupada said, as, as you're saying, that the human form in the spiritual sense, the human pure spiritual form, the, the Siddhas rule, that is uh, the complete state of consciousness. <laughs> Any other points, questions, or comments? Okay, thank you all for coming. Uh, your homework for next week is the next verse, which is the Ishabasha verse, the first verse. And then after that, we'll start grouping the verses together and we'll move through a number of verses per night. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. It's very nice association, very enjoyable. It's also uh, this particular program we're using, what's it called? WebEx. Uh, it has, can you see it? Like it brings up the, uh, the words at the bottom while I'm speaking. Yeah, you can see that as well. Yeah, I can see it. So as I speak, the words, uh, get printed out, which is very nice. It's funny though. When, you know, when I say Krishna, it says Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Yeah, and a few of the other words is interesting. When I say Sanskrit words, then, uh, yeah, it uses other words. It's quite funny. Sometimes I have to stop myself from, uh, yeah, cracking up and getting distracted during the presentation. But, yeah, but it's a nice little feature. <laughs> it does look very entertaining. Okay. We'll see you next week. Thank you all for coming. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Babu. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Thank you. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Krishna. Hari Krishna. See you soon. See you soon. Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Hari Bo.